Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 13th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own visual novel style game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll add in the ability to click and find, so some interactive experience in the game. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So up until now, we've been able to link our two scenes, and we just have this simple park scene at the moment. So the big thing to do in this one is to create part of the event, which will allow our first character to come in and say, let's look for uh, Akane. So in order to do that, what we'll do is let's first turn on Assume Confused and let's turn on Fade In. And if we press play, we should be able to fade in and Kasumi will uh, appear. There we go. So the next thing we need to do is have a text box that says, right, let's look for Akane. And we can do that by manipulating our scripts. So let's go to scene two event. And we can actually use things within scene one event to kind of make all this come together. So as soon as it loads, or rather as soon as the first scene event loaded, uh, we basically started having this section appear here. I wonder where Haruka has got to, if you remember all them tutorials back. We're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to take event starter from scene zero one event, head into scene two, and I'm going to place it just below because we already have event starter and we've already started our event up here. So every bit afterwards is going to occur here. So what we can do is we can take everything, uh, let's say, after we've turned this active as off, we don't need Kasumi, so that's fine. So we will take this line here all the way down to event pos equals one. Control X to cut it out paste it into this event starter, and then delete the other one that we brought in. Naturally, you're going to have some underlining things here because we need to create the variables. But firstly, let's set the text to speak. So what is Kasumi going to say? She's going to say, let's start looking for Akane. And the next thing to do would be to define some of the variables here. So the important one is going to be Kasumi herself. So as you can see, this is underlined. So let's create that variable. Serialize field, game object, and then char Kasumi with a semicolon. Next, let's do the main text object, text to speak. Well, we can actually take them from the scene one. So let's go to there. And if we look here, we have text to speak, current text length and text length, main text object and next button. Let's just copy those. Instead of retyping everything out, save time and copy them. Place them below. And we don't need a couple of things here. So let's get rid of girl Sai. Don't need that because we're not going to play any uh, sound here. Uh, event pause equals one. Well, we had event pause in the previous one, didn't we? So Let's take that variable as well, and let's place it just here. And finally, text box. Well, why don't we just take text box as well? This right here. And let's place this one at the top. So now all we've done is we've imported the very mechanics from scene one event into scene two event, and this will function perfectly. All we really need to do at this point is just set the variables correctly because we already have the, the, the coroutine being started here. That's perfect for us. Let's save our script, head back into Unity, give a second just to think about it. And when it's done, let's click on Scene Control. And we just need to set these variables right here. Now, I struggle sometimes because I, I record a lot of tutorials all together and I can sometimes get mixed up which tutorial was which and I can't remember which is which. So let's set the things I can remember for now. 
Kasumi Confused is the Char Kasumi. I think text box is text box, but I will check before we do anything. Uh, main text object and next button. So next button, I know for a fact, is that one. Main text object. Let me quickly double check. Uh, okay. So main text object, I think, is actually text box. And text box is speak text, I believe. So let's now press play and see what happens. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this works. OK. Let's start looking for Akane. So the next button hasn't appeared. So we just need to make sure that we get that in place. So uh, the next button, if we go to scene one, in fact, maybe we don't even need it. Maybe we should just have this as an auto section. I, th you know I think we should do that because it will give us the experience of creating something different. So we will automatically play this section and then automatically start looking for Akane. So rather than have the next button, let's have after event pause equals one. I'm just going to do the double slash so we can have an annotation. Auto start looking for Akane. So what we'll do is we will yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, I'll do just two seconds for now. We may need to change it a little later on, depending. Uh, next thing we need to do is set char kasumi as off. So set active, in brackets, false, and main text object. Got the uh, semicolon there. Uh, main text object as set active and have that also as false. So let me save that. Let's go back into Unity. We'll make sure that after that has played, saying let's start looking for uh, Akane, that it does indeed disappear. And then we can start our little interactive section. So we've got our sequence of events in place. Cool, so far so good. Let's start looking for Akane. And it's not disappeared. Why is it not disappeared? What? Uh, maybe we need to disable that next button. So let's get rid of that for now. Let's double slash that out. This is the great part about coding like this. You can always debug things and go line by line to find out what the problem is. Let's try again. And we should be able to see. So, yeah. Let's start looking for Akane. So I think one thing we may have forgotten to do is we need an extra line of code if we go back to our script. And if we go to scene zero one event, we need this line of code right here. And if you remember correctly, this is what creates the count for us to basically end what we're saying. So if we copy that from scene one, head to the update method, paste, resave the script, uh, we should be able to go through all of this now. So head back into Unity, press play. Now, the next button will actually appear, but I think we're going to just have this all disappear anyway. Uh, so let's start looking for Akane. See, next does appear, and that disappears as well. Uh, so what we'll do is we will ignore the next button on there. So let's definitely make sure that's annotated out. Once that's done, let's now add in the interactive section to the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn fade in off. And we're going to use buttons for this. Now, that's the clever thing about buttons. We've had it used before with the next button we have down here. We can do it for interaction here as well. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to uh, button, if I can find it. There we are. Button right there. Uh, let's have this as tree int. In fact, I'm going to change that to tree interact rather than int because that could be uh, confusing. 
I'm going to zoom in a little bit and resize that. Let's move the button over towards the tree. And let's get rid of the text in there because we don't need that to be there. Uh, let's make sure that we have the tree interact button um, as anchored to the top left. And let's change the coloring of this. So the color I think we should have as alpha, mm, mainly almost invisible. So let's have 15. And now we need to change so the highlighted color. So if we press play, let's make sure that we can actually hover over. So yeah, we could click that. That's not a problem. But we need to kind of hover over it. But that doesn't really matter because we can still click it. So we need to make sure that we have the, um, let's see, pressed color. Let's have that as much darker than what it is. So maybe 255. If you don't want it that way, that's completely fine. We can clearly see that there is something to interact with here. So you could, you know, just do that. That'll work just fine. Let's now hold control, press D to duplicate, and let's move it over here uh, behind this. What I might do is move Kasumi across just a little bit. And let's have this button just here. So there's going to be two places that we can theoretically interact with. Uh, we'll have this as house interact. Now, what we're going to do with these is basically make them appear after Kasumi has said, let's look for Haruka. Uh, sorry, Akane. So we need to turn both of these off and head back to our script and define them as variables. So let's say serialize field, game object, and we'll have tree interact semicolon and then serialize field game object and then house interact semicolon and that means down here after we've set these as set active false we can say tree uh, interact dot set active and in brackets true semicolon and then the next line will be house interact dot set active also true semicolon and save that script. So the idea of what we'll do is we will create another event that will say, oh, no, she's not here. So we can do the same sort of thing again. In order to do that, what we need to do is create an actual method for when we click the button. So further down this script, let's say public um, void, and we'll call it tree interact. No close bracket, no curly bracket. What happens when we do this? Well, quite simply, it's going to be a coroutine again. And what we'll do is we'll take that event starter, we'll place it below tree interact and we'll put instead of event starter if, uh, don't go too far tree interact which means that um tree interact what would, what would make sense sequence s e q so that would mean that in public void tree interact we would need to put Start coroutine and in brackets tree interact sequence o close bracket close bracket semicolon. Now, what we need to do is we need to work through this and define what we actually need to be here. So, we want these to disappear, we don't need event zero there. We want Kasumi to reappear on screen, we want the main text object to come on, and we want Kasumi to say. Nope, Kane is not behind the tree. But at the same time, we also need those interactable objects to disappear. So what we'll do is we'll take tree interact, house interact, place them inside the tree interact sequence and set them both as false. 
like so. So now we'll run through the course. We'll say, yep, all this is good. Talking, blah, 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 blah. However, at the end, we turn Kasumi off. We turn the text object off. But we also don't need to turn on the tree interact again because we don't want to interact with the tree again. We've already searched that. We only want to interact with the house. So only that one will appear. So now let's save. And if you have any problems with the script, I will put this. If you go to the pinned comment or the link in the description, you'll be able to download this script for free. Let's head back into Unity and go to Scene Control. And let's define these two objects. So we've got Tree Interact that goes into there, House Interact that goes into the. Why well, is not dragging? There we go. House Interact into there. All good. We have that set. Next thing we need to do is on tree interact, we need to scroll down. Where it says list is empty, we need to click plus. We need to drag and drop scene control into there. Click on no function. Then click on scene O2 event. And we have tree interact right there. So now if we press play, actually, before I do that, let me turn the fade screens on. Um, so we need fade in there we go okay so now let's try this out we should be able to play this sequence and interact with the tree see at the moment we cannot interact with the tree which is good let's start looking for a car name good so well, we can interact with the tree so let's do so there we go nope akane is not behind the tree disappeared and now we cannot interact we can only interact with this and this is where akane is going to be. So that's going to be what we do in the next tutorial. We'll create the second interactive event and we'll bring in the next character. So remember, don't forget that this scene is vital to how we actually create a game itself, be the interactive element anyway. So make sure you're subscribed and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And I'll see you in the next one.